All right, this is it. Another month. We did February. Now we're doing March. Let me update that. So March 2023. I'm going to make this a recurring thing every single month where we grab every single release date of everything coming out that month that I want to play and or review. We're going to put it in a list like this, and then I'm going to pick the top 10 that I'm the most excited for. Then we'll, we'll play it out. So these are all the ones I wrote down. And this month, compared to last month, February, it's a little slow. I'm not going to lie. It's a little slow. But these are my top 10. If you are watching on YouTube, let me know your top 10 down below. If you think I should have added something on here, let me know. Like, for example, I did not put on The Last of Us, you know, part one. This is a very sort of biased list. My preference of things that I would go out of my way to play. So, top 10. Number, number 10. Nine Years of Shadows. They're coming out on Steam. Now, this is a Metroidvania. And it looks really, really nice in terms of... The setting. Look at this. Oh my god. Look at look, look at a little bit of the gameplay here. They got some some like animated videos here, like openings and stuff. Looks it just looks really good. Look at that. So if you like yourself, these Metroidvanias, Hollow Knight, you can't wait for Silk Song, maybe try this one out, etc. Yeah. Halbert Studios and Freedom Games. Curse of Shadows. Ghostly Companion, ooh. Uh, Elemental Vessel. So you'll be using a lot of different skills to get around. I'm sure you got your double jump, you know, stuff like that. Uh, heal with Music. Meet an enigmatic composer that will aid you in your missing NPCs, smoothing frequencies. Ooh, so that's my number 10, Nine Years of Shadow, okay. Number nine, Terra Nail. This one's coming out the very tail end of March 28th. This is a chill game. This is a in environmental strategy game. So you pretty much are just experimenting. I believe these are like quick maps. I say quick maps, like quick, like, uh, like exhibition maps. I don't know if you're doing a full campaign, but it looks pretty. A lot of people have this on their wish list when we saw on Steam. And it just looks like experimentation, trying to do your best. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can meta if you want, but I think, you know, this is one of those games where you go on it, you're, you're going to want to just go in, experience it, just have fun. So, City Builder coming out in a couple of weeks. A reverse City Builder. Different maps every time. Pre-generated. Natural ebb and flow. Experience tranquility. So, yeah, there we go. Number nine. Terra Nil. Number eight. Chia. This is a sort of a black sheep on my list because I wasn't sure to include it. It does look very sort of childish, maybe not my market, but they've been pushing it so much that, you know, potentially it could be good just in general to try out. Um, this is this is the game. It's a uh, sandbox game where you're controlling this character who can go and kind of take control uh, and possess beings just like you're seeing here. So, you know, it could be interesting to try out. Definitely would review it, but uh, whether it captures my attention We'll see, because I think I might get bored of it just by like the setting and look. But if the gameplay is good, it'll 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 keep me engaged for sure. So this one is gonna be a big maybe. Chia, number seven, I think. All right, number six, six five four three two, or maybe there's, maybe this is number six. Hold on, six five four three two. So this is number seven. Yeah, seven. Hunt the night. So this one doesn't have a release date, but it's coming out hopefully March. This one looked interesting when I saw the video. Check this out. Retro style, action, adventure, RPG, top down. <laughs> oh, God. Look at this thing. Look at that. Pretty fast paced, dungeon crawling. It looks good. It just looks like something that would be fun to go through. It's definitely up my alley. And I don't know if it's going to be a full game or not. It doesn't say early access here or anything. So Dangan, Entertain Dangan Entertainment. You play as a Vesper. Explore the world of Medram. Filled with ruins and horrors. So this one, I feel like it's going to be... It's going to be fun. So yeah, there we go. This one. Next on my list. Now it's number six. Right? Six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Number six. Bleak Faith Forsaken. Just found this one today as well. Archangel Studio, self-published. This is a Souls-like game. Here's a little bit of the combat. I like when you click it. It always does that. Let's see. There you go. Souls-like, baby. Damn, that looks pretty, doesn't it? Oh, crap. So, 
you know, usually we're like, ah, oh, these guys are just trying to copy Souls like games, blah blah blah, indie, blah blah blah. If it's anything like, uh, at least up to the standards of Mortal Shell, which is a pretty like short but decent, you know, Souls like. Then, you know, I'm down, and I think it'll be well-received. It doesn't look bad. Oh, and look at all those swords you're carrying on your back. Oh, whoa. Okay, so this has high potential for sure. High, high, high potential. I'm expecting good things, which means all the more shitty if it's before let down. Wow, you're on the back of this? What is this, a boss? Open world and exploration. Climb, leap, ascend. Hardcore combat experience. Epic boss fights. RPG progression. Playstyle versatility. I saw that he was using like a bow and arrow. Hopefully I can do that. So there you go. Number six, Bleak, Faith, Forsaken. Number five, Crime Boss. Now, we're not on the Steam page because this is Epic exclusive, but here we are. This one got teased a little bit ago. It has like a really nice cast, you know, like you got Michael Rooker, you got, uh, there we go, Michael Madsen. It's like, it's interesting because they have so much personality into it. It's a first person game. I don't know if it's open world or not, or if it's just, um, let's see, or if it's just missions. It doesn't really say, I think. But just because they, they put so much resources into it and it's epic exclusive, it gives it a fighting chance at the start. You know, you, you know like it's not an indie game. It's freaking 40 bucks, too. So, yeah. This one looks interesting. Um, excited to check it out. Dang, what the hell? Mr. Norris. All right. I have a feeling it's not gonna be good, but it'll be like one of those so bad it's good games. But if it end up if it ends up being good gun, then perfect, awesome. So there you go, number five, number four, small land, survive the wilds. Now we just finished playing a game called I think it was Grow or something like that or Small whatever. When you're it's like that one game by Obsidian where you're playing as those kids who got shrunk. I forgot the name of it. This reminds me of that. However. This one, though it's the same sort of similar sort of game loop, it seems, where it's an open world, you're running around. This one has more of like a fantastical feel where you're flying around, you're like these little fairy creatures. Look at, oh my god. Like it looks more definitely janky, right? It's not, I don't think it's gonna have the polish, but it looks to be developed enough where I think even if you play single player, it should be fun. But yeah. It's early access, which is kind of a too bad. It's a letdown early access, as usual. But I'm excited to just try it out day one. Look at that, you can get grass, grasshoppers and stuff. Ten players in multiplayer. I don't know how much it was in the other game. It was like four of like four kids or something. So yeah, I'm a sucker for these type of games. This one looks to have potential. Maybe it's gonna be crappy at launch, but maybe when it comes out, it'll be good. So that's number four. Small ants around the wilds. Number three, Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. This is an ambitious game with a pretty well-known IP. This is like video game IP, board game IP, stuff like that. Um, Tainted Grail. So this is an open world action RPG. So this is, like I said, it's gonna be tough, but I think they got the, you know, it's, it's a good IP, so hopefully there's a lot of love put into it. The world feels vibrant. The combat's good. The gameplay, look, got another bone arrow there. Oh, look at that. Amazing. So, yeah. Don't know much about the world itself. I did play another game in sort of the the, the IP, though. It was like a... Um, it was a card battler, I think? That was fun. So, yeah, there we go. Yeah, it was Conquest. Yeah, I played this one. Deck building. I played this one. That was pretty interesting. But, yeah, this is like super crazy, bleak, open world customize arena all right yeah so once again huge potential we'll see what happens that was number three number two it's resident evil man re4 now i never played the original re4 i don't know if i should i really don't know if i should go out of my way to play this one or or play the first one or just play this remake and be completely enthralled and have a totally new experience you know, there's those who have played it recently or back in the day. They're going to play this with a sort of bias. Like, this game is great, blah, 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 blah. Let's see how they translated the things back in the day to this one. What sort of new mechanics are implemented? What did they cut out? Blah, blah, blah. I think we're going to go in completely blind. Just like we did when we played Resident Evil 3 Remake. Even though I heard they cut out so much crap out of that, unfortunately. But I still liked it. 
because I didn't know any better. But here we go. This one, high quality as hell, dude. Like how? Like I don't know, dude. I loved Village. I love Three. I didn't. I never played the Two remake yet. But yeah, this one. It's like there's not much you could say about it. This is like really, really well, well hyped. A lot of expectations. It looks good every single time I see trailers. So there you go. And finally, my number one, Wolong, which actually comes out in two days, 20, 22 hours. Wolong Fallen Dynasty. So I did play the demo, the first demo that came out with, with non-transferable um, sort of progression. The demo's out. There's another pro, uh, another demo out right now, which is like one to two chapters that you can bring on over and you get like a special helmet. I'm just going to wait till it comes out. Real like the games that these guys put out, you know, Love Neo, all that good stuff. What else did they put out? The Attack of Titan, Monster Rancher, Wild Hearts. Jesus Christ, they also did Wild Hearts? I'm still in the middle of playing Wild Hearts. Jesus Christ. So yeah, they put out a lot of good stuff that people like. Fatal Frame, they're coming out to Wild Pogs. Yeah, so it's, it's a no-brainer. This one's going to be good. I know it's good because I played the demo. I like it, and it's interesting to see just the different builds you get because like, I only scratched the surface in terms of the different type of stuff you can do. Because in that first demo, they kind of made it so you level up really fast. You have access to all these all these early game spells so you can see what's going on. So I'm excited to go in and, you know, have another Souls-like experience where I take like forever to kill a boss. But it is what it is. Wolong, number freaking one. Yeah, it's going to be good. So that's it for the top 10 for March. We'll do the same thing for April. And uh, let me know down below what you guys think of my list. Remember, this is a personalized list. You guys have your own. And if you do, put it, you know, 10, 9, 8, all the way to 1. Let me know down below in the comments. And uh, we'll see. Now, thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys later. Bye.